Good evening. Welcome. I'd like to welcome you to this public hearing of the New York City Rent Guidelines Board. This is the third of five public hearings to consider comments concerning proposed rent adjustments for renewal leases for apartments, lofts, hotels, and other housing units subject to the Rent Stabilization Law of 1969 and the Emergency Tenant Protection Act of 1974. These adjustments will affect renewal leases commencing between October 1, 2017 through September 30th, 2018. I will now take roll call. Please respond if present. Hillary Botin. Present. Harvey Epstein is absent. He's on his way. Shayla Garcia. Present. Cecilia Hosa will not be here this evening. David Reese. Present. Helen Schaub. Present. Mary Serafi. Present. Scott Walsh. Present. And Kathleen Roberts, that's me. Let the record show that we have a quorum. The next meeting of this board will be a public hearing on June 14th. In all, there will be two more public hearings to comment on the proposed guidelines. They will be held on the following dates, times, and locations. Wednesday, June 14th, Alexander Hamilton U.S. Custom House 1 Bowling Green in Manhattan from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Interpretation available in Spanish and Mandarin. Monday, June 19th at St. Francis College Founders Hall, 180 Remsen Street in Brooklyn, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Interpretation available in Spanish. Directions to these hearings can be found on our website, nycrgb.org, in the About Us section meeting schedule. You can sign up to speak at these hearings by calling the Rent Guidelines Board offices at 212-669-7480, then press zero to register. There are copies of our meeting schedule here today at the registration table. The final vote will take place on June 27th, starting at 7 p.m. It will be held at Baruch College, Mason Hall, 17 Lexington Avenue, corner of 23rd Street, in Manhattan. To board members, please note that drafts of both the hotel and apartment explanatory statements will be in your folders at the June 14th public hearing. We request your comments on or suggested additions to the statements no later than the morning of June 23rd. Revised drafts will be sent to you via email by Wednesday, June 20th, reflecting additions resulting from the public hearings. Any questions, please see Andrew. In your folder, you will find a copy of an RGB staff memo. This memo was distributed to board members via email prior to this meeting. Uh, for the public, if you are interested in receiving emails regarding future rent guidelines, board public hearings, and meetings, please see the RGB staff at the registration desk. Before we begin our hearing, I would like to read some of the rules and parameters for those who are testifying below, um, before the board. Each speaker will have two minutes to give his or her testimony. In the event that large numbers of people wish to speak, the chair reserves the right to reduce the allotted speaking time. The clock will beep once when the speaker has 30 seconds left. I will attempt to alternate speakers between tenants and owners, but this may not always be possible. Speakers must confirm their presence with the RGB staff at the registration table located near the entrance of the hall. Speakers will not be called if they have not checked in at the registration table. There is a Spanish interpreter here today as well as simultaneous Spanish translation. When registering to, to speak, please notify the staff if you would like an interpreter. I will try to call several names in advance. If your name is called, it's advisable that you move to the front of the auditorium. If you have materials to distribute to the board, you should give them to the RGB staff sitting at the sign-in table near the entrance. And we ask that you please try to stay within your allotted time of two minutes so that we can get through as many speakers as possible. I'll now ask our interpreter to uh, interpret the announcements. Thank you. Eh, les doy la bienvenida a esta audiencia pública de el, la Junta de Delineamientos de la Renta de la Ciudad de Nueva York. 
Esta es la tercera de cinco eh, audiencias para considerar comentarios relacionados con los ajustes propuestos para la renta, para contratos que se renovarán para apartamentos, lofts y, y hoteles y otras unidades de vivienda que están sujetas a la Ley de Estabilización de Renta de 1969 y el Acta de Emergencia de Protección de Inquilinos de 1974. Estos ajustes entrarán en efecto en contratos renovados en empezando el primero de octubre del 2017 y hasta el 30 de septiembre del 2018. Las siguientes reuniones de esta Junta en la, en, eh, como audiencia pública será el 14 de junio y habrán eh, en total dos audiencias públicas más para hacer comentarios a, estas, eh, lineami a los lineamientos propuestos. Tendrán lugar en las siguientes fechas, lugares y días el 14 de junio, miércoles, en Alexander Hamilton U.S. Custom House, en, en Bowling Green, de 2 a 8 de la noche, habrá interpretación al español y al mandarín. El lunes 19 de junio, eh, en St. Francis College, Founders Hall, en 180 de Ransom Street, en Brooklyn, de 5 de la tarde a 8 de la noche. Eh, la, la, para recibir direcciones de cómo llegar a estas audiencias, deben visitar nuestra página web, eh, NYCRGB.org en la sección uh, About Us y hay el horario de las reuniones. Usted puede inscribirse para hablar a estas eh, durante estas audiencias eh, llamando a las oficinas de la Junta de Lineamientos de Renta al 212-669-7480 y luego eh, presionar cero para registrarse. Hay copias de nuestros horarios de reuniones aquí hoy en la mesa de la entrada. El voto final tendrá lugar el 27 de junio, empezando a las 7 de la noche, y será en Baruch College, eh, Mason Hall, en la 17 de Lexington Avenue, en la esquina con la calle 23, en Manhattan. Si está interesado en recibir eh, correos electrónicos relacionados con las reuniones públicas de, de la Junta y las audiencias, por favor, regístrese con nuestro staff del RGB a, en, la, en la mesa en la entrada. Eh, antes de que empecemos nuestra audiencia, quisiera leer algunas de las reglas y los parámetros para esas personas que van a dar sus testimonios frente a la Junta. Cada persona que va a dar su testimonio tendrá dos minutos y en el, el, si es que hay un número de personas muy grande eh, que, van a, que quieren hablar, eh, la presidenta de la Junta se reserva el derecho de reducir el tiempo para hablar. El reloj eh, que está contando el tiempo va a tener un sonido de alarma cuando ya le queden solamente 30 segundos y eh, yo voy a alternar eh, personas que hablan entre eh, inquilinos y dueños de propiedades, pero esto tal vez no siempre sea posible. Eh, los, eh, las personas que van a hablar deben confirmar su presencia con el personal del RGB en la mesa de registración que está afuera, cerca de la entrada de, del salón. Eh, las personas que van a hablar eh, no, no se les va a llamar si no se han registrado en la mesa. Hay una intérprete en español aquí hoy para, y también eh, interpretación simultánea al español. Cuando se registre para hablar, por favor, avísele al, al personal si quiere una intérprete. Voy a tratar eh, de llamar a varios nombres de, eh, con anticipación. Si le llamamos con anticipación, le pedimos que por favor se mueva al frente del auditorio. Si tiene materiales que quiere distribuir a la Junta, debe dárselas al personal de la Junta que está sentado, que está sentado en la mesa de registración. Y eh, le pedimos que por favor eh, respete el tiempo que se le asigna para hablar, para que, podamos hablar, para que podamos dar la oportunidad de hablar a la mayor cantidad de número de gente posible. Thank you. All right, the first three speakers will be James Jones, Dr. Jim Fairbanks, and Lucia Garcia de Sopeda. Mr. Uh, Jones, first, please. Corporation Council 100 Church, indicated by law, adversary must supply each and every tenant living at parcel property notification of filing for bankruptcy bankruptcy this did not happen 
why was the bankruptcy filing approval a big surprise to each and every tenant at the parcel of property? Male Negro adversary came before Chinese man, bankruptcy director. Chinese man, bankruptcy director. Tell Chinese man, bankruptcy director, Dr. Martin Luther King, want him, want him to have the embezzle of missing $200,000. Dr. Martin Luther King, want him to have the embezzle, embezzle of missing $200,000. The word bull, B-U-L-L, -L. the word bull, the bullfighter uses a cape or cloth to attract the bull to come charging colloquial, colloquial usage. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Dr. Jim Fairbanks. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I propose a rollback. And the reason I say that is because recently the city has adopted a policy of income equality. Income equality has been the result of the movements of living wage, rent freeze, right to counsel. So it seems to be a movement that we realize that people must improve their income in the city to have more equality. That's why I find it chilling when you propose rent increases. Uh, that seems to me a policy of income inequality. So I want to know if you, I'm a little confused, do you believe in the city's new official policy of the last several years of income equality? Or do you believe in income inequality? Renters are still, by and large, low income. I still have had a couple conversations tonight with people who are in housing court right now. Now, if you want to make money in this city, you invest in real estate. Landlords are doing quite well. Some of them are wannabe one percenters. Let's be clear who we stand for, whether it's for income equality or income inequality. So I think you ought to have a policy of income equality. So whether the housing is for people living now in housing or for any new housing to come, it should be based on income equality, on paying rent where the present residents can afford to pay rent and not be displaced. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you. Lucio Garcia de Cepeda. Buenas tardes. Good evening. Yo estoy aquí reclamando porque no aumenta la renta y los sueldos no no lo aumentan. I'm here to ask uh, why is that they raise our rent when salaries don't go up? Yo no gana demasiado poco dinero para pagar esa renta tan cara. One makes very little money to be able to pay such a high rent. No podamos vivir una vida bien, no podamos alimentarnos bien, porque no es lo que ganamos no da más es todo para la renta. We can have a good life, we can feed ourselves because the money doesn't stretch enough for us to live. Ni no da pa pa lo gasto de del hogar. We can even uh, fulfill the expenses of our homes. Buena tarde. Good evening. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. The next three speakers are Edward Gajadar, if I've got that right, I'm sorry, Cliff Hahn, and Elliot Liu.
Edward Gajadar. Ah, great. Come forward. I guess I registered to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was registering <laughs> when I walked in. Um, I've been a part of this community. November 8th of this year will be 30 years. And uh, you know, I went to college, went to St. John's right across the bridge, went to law school, and I quote unquote made it, but I refused to leave because I wanted the people of my community, my, my community to see success. I didn't want there to be a brain drain, okay? I wanted to add to my community. And I hope that I've done that over the last 30 some odd years. Um, and I still refuse to leave. However, with that said, there's still a lot, of, uh, a lot of issues, and one of them is rent, and that's why I'm here um, tonight. I, was, I thought I was just here to support the, the cause of keeping New York affordable. Um, one of the things that I, I said 25 years ago was that where I live on Walton Avenue in 167 is prime real estate, and we're gonna be priced out one day. And I'm seeing it slowly but surely happen. So, you know, this is, this is not, this is not a, a, these are real people. I'm real, I'm a real person, right? These are real lives that we're dealing with. I'm seeing friends and family members being priced out of our neighborhood. Neighborhoods where literally 30 years ago, if you've ever seen the movie New Jack City, that's what we lived in. No lights in the hallways, okay? Stepping over bodies at a, as a 14 year old, crack, uh, the, during the crack epidemic, crackheads fighting over pipes, and this is what I woke up to, to go to school, and what I came home and saw. And to be priced out now would be a crying shame. Thanks. Thank you. Cliff Hahn. Good evening. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> uh, I live uh, actually across the river in Manhattan. I missed the, the last meeting, uh, so I came to this one. I live on 151st Street. My landlord is Goldfarb, and they seem to be have a reputation in this uh, city for being not as uh, above board as we'd, we'd like. Anyway, I, you know, they want to make money. Uh, my issue has to do with preferential rent. Uh, I moved into where we live four years ago and uh, received a preferential rent and the neighborhood has been slowly gentrifying and I'm very mindful and sympathetic to the people who are coming up here to say, gee, I'm being forced out of my neighborhood by higher rents. I have a situation where we have a preferential rent which because the neighborhood is now moved up to being more uh, appealing, I guess, uh, uh, that the landlord now wants to raise my rent $800 to, um, to, uh, to bring it to the, legal, to the legal rent. And I just wanted to mention that it would be great if you might look into the possibility, now, it's not gonna help me at this point, but for others, uh, t to help people who are faced with preferential rents uh, and that are going to be getting onerous increases. Uh, I applied for a scree and, ex and it was accepted, uh, but unbeknownst to me, I didn't know, and I even asked the people at the scree office, does this freeze my preferential rent or does this pre freeze my legal rent? No, but they didn't, couldn't tell me. Uh, of course, I came to find out that it is the legal rent, which was not of any help to me. Anyway, I just wanted to make that comment. Right, well, with respect to preferential rents, I can just suggest that you direct your comments to your state representatives. That is really the, the law with respect to preferential rates is a state law that actually the Rent Guidelines Board um, does not have jurisdiction over. Is so right? just okay. for your information, if you want to make your point to the so, appropriate officials. So, so just uh, my state representative. Absolutely. Gotcha. Okay, state, not city. Thank may, you. May Correct. I ask you, uh, excuse me, may I ask you, and 
please only uh, answer sure. if you'd like to. What was your preferential rent set at, and, and what's the base that it's going up the $800 from? Uh, well, it began at 2350 uh, and I was give, given the assurance by the rental agent who is the representative of the, of the landlord, because it's a managing company as well, that uh, when I saw that, you know, I saw 50 apartments before <laughs> I found this apartment and finally was agreeing, they'd agreed to, to uh, they accepted my application and it wasn't until I got to the office to sign a 25 page lease that at the very last page it said, you agree that this is a preferential rent and that th th we're not bound by the terms. And I brought this to the attention of the woman and I said, I I this is really like a bait and switch to me. And she said, look, don't worry about this. This is a very honorable landlord. It's not going to be a problem. And the following year, it was indeed not a problem because she was still there. It was the following year after she had left that they then raised the rent, rent from 24 to 27. And now they want 35. And it's a little difficult. <laughs> anyway. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Elliot Liu. Good evening. Evening, yeah. Thanks. Uh, my name's Elliot Liu. Um, I live in the Bronx and I work down at Hostos. Um, and I also work here with a group called Take Back the Bronx. Um, I used to live in a rent stabilized apartment. Uh, I was driven out by landlord harassment, both legal and, and repairs, and now I don't anymore. Um, and either way, your decision affects me uh, because the decision of this board has big spillover effects on how the housing market functions in this city. Um, I think uh, the, uh, not only does the decision of this board affect how many people, uh, how many apartments roll over and become free market apartments, but it also affects how many people are driven out of their apartments because they can't afford whatever increase you vote for. Um, I, I want to advocate for a rent rollback um, of all rent stabilized apartments in the city. And I think it's important to say, even though it's outside of your particular power, I think we need to extend rent stabilization to all the apartments in New York City. Yeah. Uh, we need a dramatic change in how we think about housing in this city, and if we accomplish that, then we'll be incentivizing a transition away from what's basically, uh, at this point, a luxury, free, a luxury housing market in the city and towards some sort of popular control over land and housing, which is the transition that needs to happen because we're living through a housing crisis across this borough and across this city. The reason this board exists is because of the result of previous generations of struggle fighting. It isn't perfect. That's why you have a mix of public and tenant representation and owner representation, right? We can create whatever comes next, and that means challenging this board in this particular setting, and it means fighting to change the rules and break outside of the box that they're trying to keep us in. So please roll back the rents, keep people in their apartments, and let's struggle to extend rent stabilization across this goddamn city. Thank you. Thank you. The next three speakers are Carmen Vega Rivera, Beverly Creighton and Cecilia Grant. Good evening, welcome. Hi, good evening. My name is Carmen Vega Rivera. I am a member of CASA. I'm also the former curator and associate director of the Bronx Museum of the Arts where we're here tonight. I came to the Bronx in 1979 to work and I moved to the Bronx in 1981. I have been living in my apartment for 37 years, just four blocks south on 161st Street in the Grand Concourse. I just wanna say immediately that it is a no to any increase and yes to a rent and rollback. I have one of the most unscrupulous, worst landlords on the list. I have been fighting him and organizing since 1993. I have used the courts, legal services. I have been in trial HP, and I want to know, how is it that an unscrupulous landlord with a predatory lender continue to operate and manage our building and try to displace me by not providing basic services, heat, hot water, 
elevator, weatherization, and the list goes on, but every year he gets awarded an increase. Luckily for the last two years, he's gotten none. He deserves none. By an increase, that will mean that he continues to get rewarded for not providing services. So I continue to say no to any increase and yes to a rent rollback. I am tired. I live on Social Security. Last year I received, or this year, 0 0.07. Any increase would be a hardship. Once again, I come to you every year to say it will be a toss-up between my specialty medication and an increase. I cannot afford it, neither can my neighbors. So I say, find some compassion, do the math, it's fuzzy, and let's get some real justice. It's time that we stop this game. Thank you. Thank you. Beverly Creighton. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Beverly Crichton. I live at 1240 Woody Crest Avenue in the Bronx. DKSR Holding owns the building. J. Slumlord Rand is the landlord. I have lived there since 2007. It was my mom's apartment. I inherited her property through her death caused by the landlord. I am going to make him pay. I have told him this more times. I can. I have told him this more than enough times, and he does not get the picture. All right. Now, I need a rent back because he has harassed me since 2007, and I am tired of him. B.S. All right. He has constantly violated my rights as a tenant, okay? He has harassed me, I owe him no rent, and a, a continual harassment every, every, every day. He does no repairs, and he wants a 4%? Four, 4 Are you kidding me? I don't think so. Anyways, the building is not safe. I've been there, the front door has never been locked. And I can walk in there, I can shoot you in there for no reason, okay? I'm disabled, understand me? To the age of, I've been this way since I was in the age of 43. I am now 61 years of age, understand me? Now, this landlord allows other tenants to harass me for no reason. And not only that, he is a slumlord. He has violated my rights as a tenant. He, is, uh, uh, he, he annoys me to no end. And the tenant above me has had a leak three times. And my kitchen has been down three times. Now, I'm getting tired of him, his nonsense. Excuse me, your two minutes is up. Could you wrap up your presentation, yeah. please? Yeah, I'm in right now. They do not need a 4% increase. You know what they need? A dose of rat poisoning for the slimy landlords that they are and a two by four with some nails in it. If you give them the 4%, you all deserve a dose of rat poisoning. Thank you. Cecilia Grant. Is Cecilia Grant here? Okay. We'll move on to the next three speakers. Jose Rodriguez, Mukataria Parker, and Wahira Marda. Jose Rodriguez? Not here, okay. Mocha Taria Parker?
Good evening. Good evening. Okay, I live uh, 156 East 178 Street. My landlord is Arthur Gibbons, and I heard that he is bankruptcy. Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Could you okay. sp speak into the microphone? Okay. Uh, how f how so you didn't hear? Uh, you said your landlord is Arthur Gibbons? Arthur Gibbons, okay. And from there? Right. I've been there for 37 years, and I haven't had an income. We doubled lot, so we don't have an intercom. Um, he harassed all the tenants as far he don't want to give us a lease. I haven't a lease since 2011, expired in 13. And um, a lot of us hasn't given our tenants any lease. As of March 2nd, we haven't had any gas. There was a leak in there. And um, I feel that our tenants, we don't, some of us, we can't afford it. He overcharged people. Most of them is rent stabilization. He's overcharging people double 30, you know, percent um, from their apartments there. So I, I hope you guys will help us that people, like they said, we can't afford that much of an income for our, um, uh, and also, he doesn't make all the repairs. You understand what I'm saying? So I had to fought years from 2009, and still some of my repairs are not, are not um, done. So I would hope you guys help us. You know, a lot of us can't afford it. People have to um, double up people to try to pay their rent. You understand what I'm saying? So please, we, we can't even afford it. I can't afford it, I'm disabled as well. Okay, so I, I hope you hear us, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, could I ask you a quick question, ma'am? Yes. So how many, how many apartments are in your building? 36. 36, and is it the problem that's across the whole building or is it just She's your apartment? The, all these issues you're talking about? With the gas? The gas. The whole building is shut down whole since building. March 2nd. And yes. have you guys been bringing like a court case against the landlord about the repairs? We don't know which way to go. Can you help us that way? We, we have some kind of tenant association, but it seems yeah. like we all not going forward. Uh, we have to write, fight, write letters or something. I mean, I'm disabled, so sometimes I can't electronically do things, but um, yes, I would like to know. I called the president, the borough president, and I asked them about it, and they, they for me to the Department of Housing, you know, um, yeah. DHCR, yeah. right. Yes, so that's where they, I have to go that way, you know, but is there any other way that we can help us? Because it's been three months without anyone, and do we, uh, do we get an abatement or get something for us because we have to buy gas? He didn't even give us hot plates or anything to help us. You know, so we have to buy all our stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, Harvey, is there anybody here who could speak with this woman? Yeah, someone in the back will meet with you, ma'am. Okay. And so, and oh, really? Wow. Okay, and so figure out next steps. Thank you. Uh, just a woman standing in the back will be able to do that, waving her arms. Mm -hmm. Thank you sure. so much, guys. Thank you. Wahira uh, Marda, is that right? You said it right. Okay. Good evening, Chairperson Kathleen A. Roberts and members of the New York City Rent Guidelines Board. I am here on behalf of Assemblywoman Latoya Joyner, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you this evening as you convene in the 77th Assembly District. Sure. For purposes of context, there are more than 33,000 apartments under rent regulation in the 77th Assembly District which is the equivalent of nearly three quarters of her constituents. 
So as you can well understand, the decisions made by the board will have a dramatic impact upon the affordability of the housing for the vast majority of her constituents. In this district, statistics indicate that the median household income is $26,436, one of the lowest median household incomes in any district in New York City. Consequently, the 77th Assembly District is also one of the most rent burdened communities in New York. The Rent Guideline Board's proposal for rent-stabilized apartments outlines an increase up to 2% for one-year leases and 4% for two-year leases. This will stress the extremely tight family budgets of countless New Yorkers in the 77th and almost certainly push a significant number of those families into homelessness. On behalf of Assemblywoman Joyner, I would urge all board members to do better than that. Indeed, now is the time to offer relief for New York's working and low-income families. A rent rollback would support working families, the real backbone of our community in the Bronx, and ensure that families never have to choose between putting food on the table and paying monthly bills. Please keep in mind, when considering a rent rollback, that even without a rent increase, landlords are allowed to raise rents under numerous circumstances, such as when major capital improvements in individual apartment in improvements are undertaken or through a vacancy bonus when apartments turn over. According to the MCI Tenant Coalition, after an MCI, tenants can face rent increases of approximately 10 to 25 percent. Tenants who may be on fixed incomes are the most vulnerable. Additionally, the Community Service Society found that the vacancy bonus was responsible for almost half of the total increases in 2014. On behalf of the more than 125,000 residents of the 77th, which includes areas of Morris Heights, Mountain, Highbridge, Claremont, and Concourse East, I urge that the Rent Guidelines Board hear their concerns when voting on June 27th and give them a rent rollback. As always, I look forward to working with the Rent Guidelines Board. Housing costs must remain affordable so that our families remain in our communities. Families should not have to worry about being priced out of their homes and communities. Thank you. Thank you. The next three speakers are Chris Silva, Amanda Robain, and Amina Perry. Chris Silva. Not here. Okay. Amanda Robain. Good evening, and thank you for having me. Um, I'm a public school teacher. I'm a divorced mother. I have a daughter to take care of. I have a job that I love. And I recently have started thinking to myself, did I make a mistake by staying in New York City? Um, I moved from a one bedroom that wasn't stabilized. I found a rent stabilized apartment, thought I found a deal. I made it. I found the New York City dream. I have a great job, a great apartment. It's going to work. I'm getting raises, and I'm finally getting ahead. I don't have to go to mom and dad's house for dinner because I can't afford to buy the food. I actually have money to spend. I turn around. My preferential rent is taken away. Um, we have the threat of the rent going up again. And it's constantly a struggle to get ahead. I am a teacher and a, a, a civil servant. And I am starting to debate whether or not I made the right choice in staying in New York City. And so we really need to roll the rents back because we have people who are the backbone of this community that may not be able to continue to live here. So that's all I really have to say. I just wanted to get my voice heard and my story told because I'm sure my story isn't the only story. There are so many New Yorkers here who, grown people, who have to have two and three roommates just to make it. So thank you for hearing my story. Thank you. <laughs> Amina Perry. Well, good evening. Uh, good thank evening. Thank you for giving me the chance to speak. My name is Amina Perry, and my landlord is Finkelstein Tinberger. Please remember that name because they are notorious. They are trying to deregulate our apartments and gentrify via the back door by taking away our, our rent differentials. You know, I understand, as a working class person, I understand that there's greater pressure due to the increased demand but consideration needs to be made for the people with, who have long-standing ties in this community. 
uh, desperate tenants in my building have been forced to rent out their rooms just to make the rent. And Finkelstein, St Finkelstein Timberger has, I, I believe illegally, you know, added capital increases to new tenants' leases when I don't even think, I don't even think that's a legal move to make. Uh, I've seen the quality of life decline in my building. We were a very family-oriented, very family atmosphere building, and now it's, we're living with strangers due to pe so many people renting out rooms. We don't, I don't recognize half the people that live in my building. This is unfair to working class people like myself and to the non-working people on limited incomes. We are often given no information by our landlord concerning renovations. In fact, the last major renovations to our kitchens and bathrooms, we were not even told that we had the right to refuse them. Some people even had brand new cabinets prior to these renovations, and they, their, their cabinets and entire bathrooms and kitchens were, were totally torn out, forcing them to have to live in hotels. By the way, I was forced to have to live in a hotel only after I questioned the landlord and asked where all the other tenants were living, then, then they put me in a, up at a hotel, but they were gonna put me in an empty apartment somewhere. I just wanted to just say that I don't think we should have, I think we should have a rent rollback or just complete rent freeze. We need to stop this gentrification through the back door and, and give working New Yorkers a chance. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, a quick question. Could you come back for a question, please? How, uh, you're, you alluded to an MCI, a major capital improvement in your building? Th that's right. How many have you had? Uh, so far we've had two. And in what period of time? Uh, with all within the space of three to four years we've had these. And how much, has there, how much have they been for per room? How much money? About $50 per room. I mean, and that's even mm -hmm. more than the, the rate of increase for, for, you know, normal rent, rent increase. Yeah. And uh, how many rooms do you have total in your apartment? Well, I have a studio, so I just have the, the mm -hmm. kitchen. So it would the, be the a $100 increase in a few uh, years. Right. A lot more than if the rent, rent guidelines board would have increased rents. That's, that's correct. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Nestor Medina. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Board, how's it going? Uh, give me just a few seconds to find my information here, which I have on my phone. So I'm here on behalf of Assemblymember Pichardo. My name is Nestor Medina. And I have a statement that I would like to read on behalf of the assembly member. The Rent Guideline Board must look at the issue facing countless New Yorkers and roll back rent prices. With homelessness on a continual rise and even more tenants struggling to pay, our only option should be to decrease rent so that more New Yorkers can remain in their homes. A rent freeze doesn't do any good if we can't afford it now. We have seen too many cases of tenants facing unsafe living conditions while rent prices skyrocket and unscrupulous landlords reap the benefits. How much is too much? When will it end? The cost of living is preposterous. The RGB cannot in good conscience do anything less than bring down the cost of living for New Yorkers in need. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. If there's anyone here who wants to speak, you need to sign in uh, at the registration desk. So if you want to speak, be sure to sign in. We're just going to take a break for a couple of minutes while we wait for some others who are signing in.